Hello friends. So I'll be talking on this uh, journal review on timing of RRT initiation. So it's a very important topic for all our intensive care trainees. Uh, so I'll just review a few studies uh, that have come over the last four, five years. Uh, it's a brief overview uh, for all the trainees from exam perspective to know as to what are all the studies that have been done regarding timing. And this is a very topical subject and very pertinent for all intensive care trainees. So the review of this topic came in this uh, journal in 2022, optimizing the timing of renal replacement. So basically it's a review of uh, five studies that have come since 2016. So there are five studies uh, from 2016 to 2021. So in 2016, two trials came, Elaine trial and Akiki trial. So Elaine trial came from German group and the US group. So this was a single center study uh, with 231 patients uh, who are in stage two acute kidney injury. Uh, so the inclusion criteria in this Elaine study was patients who are on vasopressors and patients who had severe sepsis and organ dysfunction and patients who are on fluid overload. So they took fairly uh, sick patients who are on vasopressors, sepsis and fluid overload along with high NGAL, which is a, a biomarker for acute kidney injury. So this was a hugely positive study which raised enthusiasm about uh, the role of early initiation of RRT. So they had 231 patients. So uh, for all the listeners, keep an eye on the timing of initiation of RRT because uh, these timings uh, start getting pushed in the subsequent trials. Uh, so here they used early RRT as uh, initiation within eight hours and later, late RRT was more than 12 hours. The 90 day mortality as you see was significantly less in patients where early RRT was initiated, 39.3% versus 54, and that was significant. And they even looked at one-year all-cause mortality, and one-year all-cause mortality also was less in patients where early RRT was initiated as opposed to the later RRT. So this raised a lot of uh, anti-people around the world, um, and at that point of time, early initiation was found to be, uh, was considered to be at least beneficial. Then this Akiki trial came, which was done by the French investigators uh, in 31 ICUs and much larger study than uh, Elaine study, 620 patients. But this did not show the same effect as Elaine study showed. Here they took more sicker patients. Inclusion criteria was KDGO stage 3 acute kidney injury and patients who were intubated and mechanically ventilated or patients who are on vasopressors or combination of both. So they took much sicker patients than Elaine uh, study. And uh, 620 early RRT and late RRT, if you see the, the way they defined late RRT is patients who had blood urea more than 112 or oliguria up to 72 hours. So for all the listeners, pay attention to this late RRT because the Akiki 2 trial, which came in 2021, takes this as an entry criteria, blood urea of more than 112 and oliguria of 72 hours as an early RRT in 2021. And 72 hours becomes important. So listeners keep, keep this in mind because the first AKK trial took this as a late RRT. In the AKK2, this was taken as an early RRT group. So, and as you see, 60 day mortality, there was no difference in early RRT and late RRT. So, which tempered the enthusiasm of Elaine trial, basically saying that either you start early or late, it really did not matter. So, this created a bit of a dichotomy. And then this ideal ICU trial came in 2018, again by the French group where they did this in 29 ICUs with a reasonably large number of patients of 448. Even here, they took sick patients with septic shock with acute kidney injury. So again, this was a negative study, 448. If you see the, the, the ballpark for uh, the timing of our RRT, as you are seeing, because the LN trial took 8 hours and 12 hours, here you are seeing 12 hours as early RRT and late RRT was more than 48 hours. LN took 8 hours and 12 hours. Here you are seeing the uh, post being pushed further. 12 hours was taken as early, late as more than 48 hours. They looked at 98 mort day mortality. There was no difference between early RRT and late RRT. Again, a negative trial. So after this ideal IC 2020, this was the largest trial, start AKI. This is the largest trial as of now uh, to look at the timing of initiation of RRT. And this was done in 168 ICUs in 15 countries by various uh, trial groups like ANZIX group was involved, Canadian uh, trials group was involved, UK trial group and Irish trial group. So it was across the continents.
they did and this came in NEJM in 2020 and this was the largest number of patients 2927 patients with stage 2 or 3 KDGO stage acute kidney injury and again they here if you see uh, they again push the ball post to more than 72 hours as late RRT. If you look at ideal uh, uh, ICU trial, they took 48 hours as the late RRT. In the start AK, they took late RRT as more than 72 hours. So 90-day mortality, as you see, early RRT and late RRT, there was no difference. So only aligned trial until now has been positive in showing mortality benefit. So the Akiki trial, ideal ICU trial, start AK, all this did not show any difference even with early or delayed initiation of RRT. Then came this Akiki 2 trial uh, in 2021, again by the same group which did the Akiki 1 trial. So done in 39 ICUs, 278 patients in France. So again, as I said, if you recall what I emphasized, inclusion criteria was the late RRT criteria was blood urea more than 112 or oliguria up to 72 hours was taken as a late RRT group. Here, that was taken as an inclusion criteria for early RRT. Okay. And the delayed RRT, here they did when absolute indication for dialysis arose, which means patients had to have severe metabolic acidosis and patient needed to have hyperkalemia, where there is, there is, no, there is really no uh, thought or there is no uh, sort of a debate on delaying the dialysis and blood urea more than 140 or someone who is in frank one These are absolute indication for initiating dialysis. So there's no contention with regards to this. And that was considered as delayed RRT. And what they found was day 28 RRT free days was more in early RRT, which is good. Uh, so free days was more in early RRT as compared to late RRT. But what came out striking in Akiki 2 trial was the mortality was high in late RRT group. The hazard risk for death was 1.65 and if you look at the confidence interval that was statistically significant which means there were more deaths that happened when dialysis was initiated late when the absolute indication for it arose so this was the striking finding in um, akiki 2 trial so when we now put all the trials together so this akiki trial ideal icu start aki what they found was in patients who when they took and look at the data of all these three trials what they found is about 20% of the patients were saved from getting dialysis when, the, when there was a delay in initiating dialysis. See, the RRT was avoided in 10% in early RRT group as opposed to 40%. So, which means to say there were additional 20% of the patients who got benefited by delaying dialysis in escaping from the need for dialysis because they, they were given a window of opportunity for converting oliguric to non-oliguric acute kidney injury. So, which means to say waiting for some time may prove to be beneficial if we analyze the data from Akiki Ideal ICU and START AKI trial. And in START AKI, 60% of the groups in delayed group, uh, dialysis had to be initiated because of metabolic acidosis and hypoxemia. And Akiki 2 trial, as I said, the mortality was more in late RRT group, 61.8% as opposed to 48.5% in early RRT group. So it, even in ideal ICU trial, uh, so when they did the subgroup analysis, which again came from the French group, the 17% of the patients needed urgent dialysis, where there was an absolute need. And in these patients, there was a higher mortality. So which, so which basically tells you delaying too much also may increase mortality. And starting very early on may put some patients on dialysis who otherwise may have escaped the need for dialysis at least 20% would have possibly recovered if we have to look at the collective data from these three trials. So we may miss out on giving an opportunity in up to 40% of the patients who may escape dialysis is what we could. Then what is the middle path? So, so authors conclude it is possibly reasonable that in patients with KDGO state 3, RRT could possibly wait up to 72 hours as long as the blood urea is less than 112 milligram this liter. So this appears to be a reasonable middle path where you could possibly wait until 72 hours and make sure, making sure that urea is not gone up more than 112 and give an opportunity and treat all the underlying conditions like treat sepsis effectively, remove nephrotoxic drugs or correct volume, uh, volumic status or correct the radio contrast if they've got uh, adequate hydration. 
all this possibly may give a good window for these patients to improve. So starting too early may not be very good or waiting too late. So 72 hours seems to be a reasonable time, keeping a close eye on the blood urea level and addressing all the correctable underlying issues may be the reasonable approach at this point of time with the current available evidence is what we could deduce. So the take home message is 2016, all these trials, 18, 20, no benefit with preemptive early RRT initiation. It is prudent and reasonable that we wait for 72 hours, keeping an eye on urea, correcting all the underlying causes, and then consider dialysis, but not wait too long until absolute indications arise is what we could conclude. So thank you. So that's about the overview. So you can visit my website, www.drpradeepragapa.com to review here to this lecture. So thank you one and all.